we'll get started. Maybe some folks will join us in a bit. Um, I also took care of my own audience here in the back um, at the, the room of my kids uh, with some fluffy animals to listen to us. We'll be talking about open personalization with Apache Unomi in the GDPR era. Uh, my name is Nick Wienhoff. Um, feel free to drop anything in the chat uh, as soon as you have any question um, or uh, if you just have any remark or uh, want to share something. Um, I've been in the Drupal world since uh, 13 years uh, right now, and I've been involved with uh, lots of the uh, items surrounding search, for example, um, but also in terms of personalization at my previous employer with Acquia um, surrounding Acquia Lift. Now, personalization back then was already like a hot topic, uh, mainly for really big enterprises, um, but I'm confident that today we are ready also for the mid market or for ambitious uh, companies um, from sizes such as there are plenty of in the Netherlands or uh, Belgium or anywhere else in, in Europe or worldwide um, that can now actually benefit from such solutions using um, open source software like Apache and Nomi in this GDPR era. Uh, so to be compliant as well with all the regulations. Now, um, what are we going to talk about? And it's just 30 minutes, so I'll try to uh, speed it up uh, here and there, um, just to make sure that you can also really see the demo uh, and the software in action um, using personalization and some AI um, sauce that is added to it. Now we'll talk about a global market it doesn't equal one audience. Um, this happens all too often. If you create websites with personas, um, you think of really good journeys. Um, but ultimately, it's still one site. It's a single experience depending on uh, where you click, but it's static and also the tools to analyze that are quite static. So then we get into the second thing, how to measure success. Um, I'll show you some tools on how to do this um, using um, this personalization strategy. And then also a demo with Apache Unomi and uh, what it really means in practice with Drupal. Um, and then um, we'll end off, like uh, we'll end the session with what is actually happening on the market as uh, CMS and augmented uh, stuff, um, which we call a DXP, digital experience platform. Um, we are really fan of an open DXP. So what are the open components that you can use today to uh, get started and augment Drupal um, to really build those experiences? So that's more or less the agenda. Now, um, you can't hear the audio from this video, but there are subtitles. Um, and um, what I'm going to show you is a little video um, on what personalization is about. Uh, so um, you as an anonymous visitor, um, you're actually looking for um, yeah, some, some flowers. So let's see, let's find some flowers. And there we find the website because uh, obviously it's a Drupal website. It's SEO optimized, as we heard from Water and Bent before. And here we find uh, a website as you know it today. As we click around, you can see on, on the left that we're actually gathering the information in uh, to what we call a customer data uh, profile, the CDP software as well. Now, um, we can also add some AI magic on top of that to figure out, OK, is it more a persona like an explorer, just people looking around? Is it someone that wants to shop? Or is it a B2B, a business to business persona? You can start to identify this. And then the next time um, this person actually goes to the website, we know, OK, this was an explorer. As you can see, the, the data towards explorer is now um, kind of like static. We know by doing the chance chances of what he or she clicked on, that this is an explorer. OK, the website transforms into specifically for a like an explorer persona. Um, we know, OK, now we actually convert into an email address, or we know the email address of that person. Um, so now we know, OK, who this is and what the intention is of that person. So uh, it's no longer anonymous, but we know quite a lot about this person. We know that this is uh, Sophia. We know uh, where she clicked on. Uh, we know that her intention is just to explore, not necessarily to directly shop. Um, so for that, um, we can now start to really mold the digital experience um, towards this profile. So 
that's more or less what it's about, making sure that uh, people like to come back to the site, find what they want, and ultimately also for your business to convert into either transactions or longer time on site or whatever the, the KPI could be from uh, your website. Okay, so um, to then start with a global market at one audience, um, this is what you do today. Um, you make a website and you go to social media, you Google search, there's a blog, there's a website. Um, you're probably also going to email. Um, maybe you do this with MailChimp and then the website with Drupal, but it's not all well connected. Uh, and certainly it's all the same. Your email newsletters are all the same for all the people that go into your website, unless maybe they said that uh, they have more interest into A or more interest into B. Let's take a look at an actual um, persona from the, the website that we had before, the Flower website. So this was Sophia. Uh, Sophia came in through uh, Instagram. Um, then we, we saw, okay, because she came from Instagram that maybe she wants to get inspired. Uh, we already know some profile properties at that time stored in our CDP. Um, you can see where this is going, obviously. Uh, um, then we actually get a conversion. She fills in the email address. Um, and uh, ultimately, she gets an email uh, specifically towards, okay, people coming from Instagram um, that filled in this email address. So she gets uh, this information. This is already personalized, but it doesn't really capture the intention. Um, but then it, it goes into nurturing. The person clicks around uh, and maybe changes the intention over time. And we can start to change the, the content that we send to that person uh, also over time. So. Uh, ultimately, you can see um, there's two different websites here. Um, there's pieces that are personalized based on maybe the advert diet, like the ad that they, she came into or the uh, Instagram uh, information, but also pieces that are personalized based on where she clicked on um, and then really going into those segments that could be Explorer or it could be anything else. So that, that's also what I, I wanted to say, uh, even though if you make your website uh, one really amazing experience for a person trying to buy something, it doesn't mean that you made that um, really specifically and it might not work for other personas, such as uh, the online shopper or the business to business provider trying to um, do business with you in supplying you with specific flowers. Obviously this is the case uh, specific to this use case. Um, if you have uh, ideas on or different uh, scenarios in mind, that's completely normal. Eh? Every online website is different. This is a quote that actually comes from um, a website that I found intriguing because that's this is what it's about. Uh, today's consumers expect personalization, but then the, the deeper part is you actually have to start analyzing the data to find emotional and behavioral components. Uh, just asking people what they want is not enough. Um, you have to try to figure out um, where they're actually heading to because they won't quite give it to you. Also, you need to be compliant in, um, in the GDPR where you don't necessarily have to ask all the information uh, that you would like to have. You only have to ask information that's required for you to process that stuff. Um, so also there, this is quite interesting to know more, even though they don't directly uh, enter that information. So how do you measure success with personalization? Uh, um, you could do something like this, where you say, oh, I keep track of all my metrics. Um, it's a, a KPI framework. Uh, I see average page on time. Uh, I time on page. Uh, I can see like if my site's fast enough, that kind of stuff. Um, but also here, we don't really take into account actual experience depending on the persona or the intention of that person. Similarly, you could, and I'm sure um, many of you uh, have maybe explored this, use Hotjar, for example, to figure out, okay, what is the, the most clicked item on my site? Um, and I need to start to optimize that or if I actually want people to click on something else, I need to start to optimize so that I can get more clicks here and there. This is useful, but it's not useful if you cannot segment that uh, based on your personas or based on your segments. Yeah? 
you could also do something like this, uh, do the Google Data Studio uh, integration with Google Analytics, try to figure out, okay, what are all my users, time on site, all those kind of um, different uh, metrics, but you still don't have the division on the segments um, that you just had, uh, like the Explorer or the Shopper or the B2B segment. So what if you could actually go um, one level deeper and uh, this is a case from a customer of ours um, that actually has this segment um, and they, they figured out, okay, these are the segments that I, I want to follow. Um, either it's based on the AI that I'll show you in a bit or manually because people came from Instagram or from other uh, advertisements like LinkedIn or Google. Um, and in, in this case, you can actually start to see the conversion rates or the goals that you defined in Google Analytics could also be Matomo or um, other analytics software, obviously. And, and see that in this case, um, this company had like a foreign um, person that came on a holiday and then uh, actually a local person that came on a holiday and also B2B. We can see that the, the local um, person had a lower conversion rate compared to the foreign person. So this could be that your website is too much biased towards a foreign visitor in this case. Um, and that you can work on trying to improve the wordings for local visitors, just as an example. Um, in the example of the flower website, you could say that um, if you see that people are really interested into uh, just getting information, you're pushing a lot more uh, content towards those people um, to make sure that they feel a lot more at ease so that they ultimately come back and then maybe buy. Uh, so that's what you could do with software like this. Um, this is another case that we had um, for a web shop uh, where you can see that people that came in through blogs or content actually converted more um, than people that directly went to the web shop. Um, so this is very interesting information to, to start to have. Um, this is also something you can get started really quickly. So that's enough information for now uh, about the theory. Let's uh, show you what this actually looks like. Eh? Um, for this, I wanted to ask the, the audience to um, go to the Dropsolid website and just click around. Um, you don't need to do a lot. You can just click around. What we'll show you um, is the, the personalization in action on the Dropsolid website. And uh, we'll capture online behavior. We'll discover the intention um, and create rules using Apache Unomi, and then personalize that website for each visitor. Okay. So if I'm right, then um, maybe you clicked around, you're here on this website, uh, dropsolid.com, and you see, okay, I'm interested in digital experiences in our DNA. So I clicked on this. You notice that it doesn't really have a page refresh, uh, but I did click on this. Okay, also businesses and whatever. Okay, looking fine. Um, ultimately, we go here at the bottom. Now, what did I just do? I captured uh, events. Uh, so uh, CDP or the principle of CDP is to capture data for profiles, but you can actually go into a granular level uh, to say, okay, they have profiles, you have sessions and there's events. Now um, I'll refresh this page and this is actually all the events that happened in, I think in the last minute or two um, for the Drop Solid website. We'll give it a little bit of time to load. Okay, so today we had around 400 events. And you can see that um, there's someone here in the audience maybe that clicked on people keep asking me what I think. Um, but this person, this data experience is in our DNA, that, that was me. Uh, uh, maybe um, others have also clicked around, but this is already interesting. Now, what do we do with that information? Um, you can see, and we'll actually go here into profiles. Um, that we can collect from everyone that actually goes to the website, all the event information, including all the sessions, also the most popular exit pages. This looks a bit like a Google Analytics, but the, the important part is that this information, this data is yours. Uh, so we are collecting this in Apache Unomi, um, an infrastructure that we control, um, and we're not sharing this information with any other third-party provider. This also means that the, the cookie placed on your website is yours. So there's no third-party tracking. There's no cross-site script or cross-site 
uh, tracking. This is purely first party data um, and is also allowed by the most modern browsers that do block third party trackers. Um, that, so that's important. Doesn't mean that you don't have to inform your visitors, obviously. Um, now, once you have that information, I clicked around. Um, how do you make sense of that data? Um, for this, um, Drop Solid made an addition to Apache Unomi. Um, and what actually comes out is that you can say, OK, give me all my data um, and analyze this and give me four groups. Ultimately, uh, because this can take a little uh, while, I'm um, uh, showing you a little example here on what this looks like. And you can see that there's um, a couple of segments that came out. One is English, um, because I just asked for groups. Um, it maybe then packed all English together. But then an interesting part here is that we can see people that are interested in customers and experiences and uh, lead and optimize and strategy. But then here in the bottom, there's also a, a segment for people that are mainly interested in technical audiences. Um, like uh, DXP and React and, and a couple of other things that also could be found on our blog. So if we transform these segments into uh, segments, as we call it also in Apache Unomi, which is a rule builder that you can have. This is an interface, but Apache Unomi provides an API. You could do this yourself as well. Um, you can see that we created a couple of segments like technical decision maker. Um, and I'll show you a bit around in, in what this is. You can see, okay, this equals the specific model that we created. But for sure, what we also can do is say, um, if my device has touch support, um, yeah, so equals true, then I'm also only applying this towards people on a touch screen uh, capable device. This doesn't make sense in, in this case, um, but let's see what we can do with this. So now we have the segments, either we build them manually or with the AI. Um, we can actually transform the website, as you saw before, into specific um, front pages. There's um, a Google Chrome extension here that you can find. And let's see how this website or our website looks like for a technical audience. Uh, so this technical decision maker, you can see this block in the bottom changed because I changed the segment. Um, I'll do this again for the business decision maker. Uh, you can see nearly instant, um, it reloaded the page and it gave us a different uh, variant. Um, and the word variant is important because it's actually a, a Drupal cache variant. We're not doing any JavaScript injection. We're not storing the content anywhere else. It's purely from Drupal and we're telling Drupal this is a different cache context. Now, how does this work in practice? Um, you could set this up locally. Uh, you know, like Apache Unomi is a Java application similar to Solar. You could set this up and then use the Unomi module on the Drupal.org uh, community page and um, connect it to either your local uh, Apache Unomi or to the Drop Solid platform. Now, once you have this, um, you actually get a drop down in your paragraph, in your block, in Layout Builder, um, like anywhere where you can have uh, variants. Um, to say this specific content or this specific block or this block within Layout Builder, I only want to show to uh, visitors that are within this segment. Or you can say only show this block to people that are not in this segment. And so in that case, you really can define which content goes where and, and start building different experiences and different content for different segments without leaving Drupal, without going into some solution where you have to do a whole migration or getting your content somewhere else. And then also make sure that it works with JavaScript and with teaming. Um, none of that, it's native in Drupal. Now, um, how does this work? And Apache Unomi, um, I'll show you a little bit more in detail. There's a whole API that you can find on unomi.apache.org. Um, it would take us too long to go in here. Um, but you can see you can export all these profiles. Um, it has a retention of two months uh, by default for all the events. So lots of things that are great. But it's not enough to know the intention on the website and personalize the website. It would also be great if we can personalize the email. Now, how does this work? Uh, Motic is also an open source marketing automation system. And um, in Motic, we can see we have a profile um, about myself 
again, we have to be GDPR compliant. I cannot show you anything else. Um, that I'm already here on this website. And uh, in the website, I did quite some interaction points. And you can see I opened up emails, et cetera. Um, but the tricky part here, or the, the good part, is that I got sent a tech email. How does our marketing automation know that I'm interested in technical details? And um, the nice part is that the segments that are built with Unomi can be transported into other solutions like Motic or HubSpot or uh, Google Analytics, as we saw before, um, to see, okay, I'm a technical decision maker. Remember, we created those segments ourselves. Um, and then the, our marketeers decide, okay, this is a good chance that this person is technical. Um, let's send like personalized emails to this person that are more talking about tech, like technology uh, than anything else. Um, there's also people in our marketing automation database that are more business driven. Uh, you can think about the same thing about information about flowers uh, versus actually buying flowers. So how to do this? Um, there's a whole API that um, JobSolid makes available to within the browser interact with these uh, captures or with the events that actually go to Unomi. Unomi always sends the full profile back to your browser. So also for GDPR compliance, um, you can show the user what you know of that uh, user. Um, and be very transparent. Um, you can even go that far as creating your preference center, showing everything you know about that person and allowing the person to remove um, data that you that he or she doesn't want you to know or not know anymore. Um, but also this would bring us too much into depth. And then um, the last thing that I wanted to show in this demo is the integration with Google Analytics. As I showed you before, this is the Google Analytics of, of Drop Solids, um, which I, I narrowed down just to those four segments. Um, we can see um, that we had quite some sessions from applicants in, in the last 30 days. But even though there's more applicants or business people on our website, there are um, the technical decision makers and those actually have a higher conversion rate. So you can see there's a 7.14% chance that the technical person, as soon as the intention is identified, um, will convert. This is very interesting information to start your personalization journey and maybe uh, talk about more business um, or depending on how this looks like in your case. So um, if you have any questions about that, Happy to answer because we have seven minutes left. I'll uh, quickly go through the rest of the slides. Um, as I mentioned, Apache Unomi is open source um, and it will help you personalize uh, customer experiences. The AI part is drop solid specific. It doesn't mean that you cannot get started with this. Um, in the journey that we saw before, we now have website personalization and email personalization. It brings us a step further into um, making that experience better, ideally to increase the conversion rate, okay? Um, so what this means in practice is that we're going from a CMS to an open DXP. This is what Gartner claims that uh, a DXP should be. And you can see experience presentation, orchestration, personalization, context awareness. This is exactly the, um, the, the way to go, uh, going from a CMS towards adding marketing automations, towards adding personalization. And uh, that's exactly what um, I think we should all move forward with. So market automation, CDP, and CMS. How can you do this yourself? Um, there's a blog on our website that shows you all the components, Motic or marketing automation. Well, not R, it's, it's a marketing automation software. It's open. It's open source, this PHP. You can install this yourself. Um, Apache Unomi is open. as a rule builder. It's a CDP. It's very, very powerful. Um, Drupal, amazing platform, but I don't have to uh, convince you of that. You combine with the Unomi Drupal module, and then also embedding of the forms of Matic using best practices of Drupal with Rocketship, which is uh, from DropSolid, but fully open, plus the cookie compliance module uh, that is specific um, to integrate with Google Tag Manager, but also other systems. Um, and then on top of that, or the cherry on the cake, adding AI for segmentation. So um, to conclude, this is what Drop Solid is. Uh, any questions, let me know. And I'm happy to answer in the last five minutes uh, anything that you still want to know or follow us to our booth for more questions and answers. Okay, I see 
uh, one question from Wendy. How does it relate with CRM systems? So uh, CRM systems are, are great um, in being the primary data point for your customer data. Um, it could also be financial data. And in, in this case, you could actually have the segmentation or the intention that you have of the visitor. As soon as the visitor is identified, you can integrate and move or connect with APIs that same uh, field from the profile into CRM. So you're not taking over a CRM. You're also not going to build a CRM in Drupal, but you're connecting all the dots together to more understand the visitor in a similar way that if someone enters your store, that you try to see based on the first five seconds that you interact with that person, what would he or she want? And, and that's exactly what you're trying to do here. Anything else I can maybe help you with? Or any other questions? Okay, so I'll give you four more minutes to then move to uh, another session or our boot. If you, oh, oh there's one more, sorry. Um, the first step or, uh, to, to take if you want to start is to figure out um, if you have already started with marketing automation in a way that we described here. Is your marketing automation connected with your digital journey? Um, if not, if you're quote unquote just using MailChimp, but it's not connected to people or profiles, then maybe you should start to invest in, uh, for example, Motic to just get that up and running. It's, it's really, really powerful if you connect the two dots. Um, now, if you then want to improve and increase the conversion rate, then personalization becomes very interesting. Uh, but the, the easiest part then is to just start to track data and learn from that data. And that's something you can do within a day. Um, and then the other question that I see, how complex is the integration of machine learning? Um, this is a um, software as a service from DropSolid. So this is not something you can download, but um, so if you buy that service, uh, it's not complex because you get it out of the box. Um, you click the button and it analyzes the data. If you want to analyze your data yourself, it gets complex because you have to get started in how to get the data, how to create an algorithm, to figure out, okay, what are my uh, audiences that are different from each other? Um, but maybe more about that uh, on our boot. Okay. Thanks everybody for watching and uh, enjoy the rest of your Drupal Jam. Bye-bye.